I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about magical navigation, keeping an eye on your system, as well as the usual discussion of everything that's new with responsive design techniques. Let's check it out. First up is magicnav.js, which is a jQuery plugin for generating navigation links on your web page. It's available at John Polasek. Is that how you pronounce it, Jason? Polasek? Polasek.github.com slash magicnav.js. And basically, if you just run magicnav.js, it will take all of those first level headlines and turn them into links that you can click on and then smoothly scroll down to other parts of the page. So it's pretty easy to use. Basically, you just select your H1 elements there, and then you say what the ID of the element should be that you want to put them inside. So pretty handy. It has a very specific use case, I think, but uh, I don't know. I think it could come in handy in a few places. I'm a big fan of anything that saves me having to do a lot of typing, which that definitely does. Very true. But if you are coding your site semantically, you know, that could be a really, really big help. That's true as well. Uh, next up, we're going to be talking about Glances. Glances is a little Python application for the command line, so this is a little bit more developer related. This lets you keep an eye on different aspects of what's going on with your system. Uh, and by your system, I mean your computer, the thing you're developing with. Thank you for clarifying No that. problem. I, I figured of all the things I would clarify, it would be, it would be what your system is. Uh, so this is going to let you take a look at things like CPU load, network load, and how much memory different applications are taking up. It's a command line application, so it's easy. Just go ahead and run glances. If you want to take a look at the code for it, it's developed in Python. So uh, it shows you disk I.O., uh, what volumes you have mounted, as well as what, of all, what all your CPUs are doing. So uh, go ahead and check that out at nicolargo.github.com slash glances. Well done. No problem. All right. Next up is slab text. And this is a another jQuery plugin that's handy for creating responsive designs. Now this is actually similar to Paravel's fit text jQuery plugin, except it uses what's called a slab type algorithm. So you can have multi-line headlines instead of just a single line of text that fits to a responsive design. So if I were to resize this browser, it would actually reflow this headline and it would all be spaced proportionally. Now this is pretty handy because so many headlines are multi-line and you want them to be really big and kind of take up the whole page no matter what size the device is. And FitText did a pretty good job of that, but this takes that just one step further. You know where this would be really useful, Nick, is displaying tweets full screen on web pages. So just 140 characters across a 27-inch screen. Yep, one single tweet. J Jason, you're always thinking practically. Well, you know. <laughs> so Nick, it's time for our app review. Let's check it out. Nick, how often do you write Markdown? All the time, actually. All the time. Well, I have a tool for you. It's called Marked. You can get it at markedapp.com. This is a markdown uh, program that's going to display the markdown that you're writing in another application. Most people prefer to write markdown or anything like that in a text editor. And what this will do, anytime you save a file, it's going to go ahead and redisplay it in another window uh, with all the formatting intact. The thing that's really nice about this program is that it has different style sheets that it can output. So you can have you know, a book style, different text. You can even do custom style sheets, and then it'll either export to HTML or PDF for you. I uh, have a little demo right here if you want to see it. I've got TextMate 2 over on the left and Marked over on the side. And you can see as I'm writing things, they show up on the right side and Marked as soon as I press the Save button. So a uh, great app. It is a paid app. They are unfortunately not sponsoring this show. Shame, Shame on them. them. Wow, that was awesome. Um, but that is available in the App Store or at markedapp.com. That's pretty cool. 
So, so what are you thinking, Jason? I'm glad you asked that, Nick. I'm thinking async these days. <laughs> Uh, what I'm actually referencing, strangely enough, is not how I'm thinking, but an article by Chris Coyer over on the CSS Tricks website on thinking async. And in this article, he's talking about when you load JavaScript from third-party websites, you should do it asynchronously. What this is going to do is if there's some holdup on another website, it's not going to impact the load time of your own site. Now, there are a few different techniques and a few different approaches for how to do this. And in this article, which is definitely, definitely worth reading, um, it goes through, tells you a few different ways to do it, and you can figure out your preferred method. Uh, this is something that you're really going to want to keep in mind these days as sites load more and more external JavaScript for different plugins and you know anything you need, like buttons, tweet this buttons, share buttons, email everybody you've ever met buttons, and who even knows what's next. That's, that's a lot of stuff to load in. Yeah. So well, that'll you, definitely help. You want to have all those buttons on your site. Most definitely. The more buttons, the better. Uh, but it is, a, it is a great technique. Terrible advice. All right. Next up is tip icons or type icons. We couldn't quite figure out how to pronounce this, but basically it's at typicons.com. What, what are type icons, Nick? Jason, I'm so glad you asked. Type icons are basically a vector based web font kit that you can go ahead and embed in your web app or your native iPhone or uh, Android application. And it will allow you to use a font to display icons. Now, this is pretty handy because that means you don't have to include a whole bunch of different assets for all these tiny different icons. You can go ahead and just throw in one font, and then you have access to this whole nice, consistent icon set. The thing is, it's a little bit limited in scope, but I think it has kind of all the basic things that you might need. And the nice thing about it being a font is that it's vector based. So it's ready for all of those fancy new retina displays. That's awesome. It is pretty awesome. I, I wish they would include some sort of pronunciation on the site. I think that's the only thing it's missing, really. <laughs> so uh, next up, you know, we talk about retina displays and ways of displaying retina images all the time. Uh, we've gone over plugins that allow you to display graphics specifically for retina displays in JavaScript. Uh, recently came across a blog post by Sean Inman on how to do this automatically and conditionally. Now, his, his approach to this is pretty neat. Uh, he says as soon as a retina-enabled device comes to your website, what you're going to want to do is set a cookie using JavaScript saying that the device is a retina device. From there, on your web server, you're going to use conditional rewrite rules to automatically redirect the browsers to that specific retina image uh, as soon as they load the page after that initial request. This is a really interesting approach that I think has a, you know, a lot of credit for picking up. Um, similar you know, in nature to keeping all of your retinified images in a certain directory and using convention to serve them, but definitely one to keep an eye on. Pretty nifty. Next up is Sneak Peek It, available at sneakpeekit.com. And basically, if you're feeling like a hipster, these are sheets of paper that you can go ahead and print out and then have something to actually physically draw your mock-ups on. Wow. I, I know that that's a novel concept. What year is it? I, I, I feel like uh, I'm transported back to the 90s here. <laughs> basically. You know, a lot of web designers these days use digital tools to mock up their websites. They might do it in Illustrator or Photoshop or Fireworks or, you know, various Adobe apps. There's also apps that are specifically for mocking things up, like Balsamic Mockups. That's one of my favorites. There's also web-based tools like Mockingbird. So there's a whole bunch of stuff to check out there. But if you would like to take out a pencil and paper, uh, Sneak Peek It provides really great downloadable PDFs that you can go ahead and print out and then just draw your website right on there. And they have all the nice measurements for like a grid-based layout and you can also uh, go ahead and do stuff for the iPad and more. So pretty nifty. I wonder, uh, do they include guidelines for typewriters on there as well? I, I, I think so, Jason. I think there are guidelines for typewriters on there just for you. All right. 
Uh, next up, there is a, another jQuery plugin called jQuery Picture. This is a plugin that is to, quote, help ease the design and transition towards responsive images. So this is going to use the new figure and picture tags uh, and give you a little snippet of jQuery JavaScript that you can just use for, say, figures that are responsive. Call this picture method. And if you have provided the different sizes, it will display the different pictures when you resize your browser uh, with the different media queries. Pretty simple plugin, weighs in at two kilobytes, so you have literally no reason not to use it unless it doesn't make sense for your project. Pretty nifty. Yeah, nice, uh, nice plugin. Yeah. Well, Jason, what did we learn today? We learned that responsive design and retina images are still a thing that we have to look out for on the web. I think they're here to stay. Yeah, at least for a little while. Just a little bit. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at Nick RP. And I'm at Jay Cipher. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of The Treehouse Show. For show notes and more, check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash go treehouse. This episode was brought to you by Treehouse, the best way to learn web design, web development, mobile, business, and more. You can check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.